So this uh, case against Redigi, which had a business model of uh, providing a platform where people could resell the iTunes music that they had quote unquote purchased, uh, has been going on uh, for almost, what, six years now, back in 2011, uh, the lawsuit by Capitol Records was filed against Redigi uh, for infringing on that company's copyrights. And uh, Redigi lost that case. Uh, there was a judgment against Redigi in 2013. The court found that Redigi was not eligible for the first sale doctrine. Uh, and this is really the first case that brought to the fore this notion that when you're buying things like movies and music through the services that stream them, uh, that might not mean the same thing based on the terms of service that apply uh, as if, you know, back in the olden days, if you guys remember going down to Tower Records and picking up a piece of physical media and bringing it home with you, uh, that your rights might actually be different. So uh, Redigi and Capitol Records have actually been uh, involved in this case since it was filed in 2011. And uh, there was the possibility of a second trial, but it seems that last month the parties uh, have reached an agreement where uh, the, court, the case is not going to go to trial mm. again. Um, there is a stipulated judgment against Redigi that will be entered. There's no information as to what sort of uh, financial compensation might be flowing from Redigi to Capitol Records. There was a large judgment against them in the first trial. Uh, so, Mike, I think you uh, flagged this maybe in your Twitter feed. And uh, so let's get your take on this first. Yes, so this is a really interesting issue, as you mentioned, Denise, involving first sales. So Section 109 of the Copyright Act provides that um, once you obtain lawfully, and that's the key here, once you – or once the copyright owner puts a book uh, or a CD or some work into the stream of commerce and you lawfully acquire that – that copy, you are then, as the owner of that copy, you can dispose of it as you wish. You can give it to your friends, you can resell it, you can rent it, you can do all sorts of things with that copy now that you lawfully own it. So what Redigi wanted to do is, is it had the business model of saying, hey, if, if I can resell a CD or a record, why shouldn't I be able to set up a business model where I can provide a platform whereby people can sell their digital music or digital files? And what Redigi did is through its platform, what it would allow a user to do is it would allow a user to take its digital um, uh, library and it would – it had this piece of software that the user would download. The user – it would scan the user's hard drive and look for lawfully purchased copies of your Apple iTunes library or songs from the library. And then it, what it would do is it would take that copy, your digital copy residing on your hard drive, and it would upload it to the Redigi cloud – and then it would delete it from your hard drive. So you no longer had a copy of it and it would be able to be sold or otherwise transferred to some other user. So Redigi's argument all along was, look, this is really no different than me disposing of my CD or my record that I purchased because I – I lawfully obtained a digital file from Apple. I'm disposing of that, and I'm no longer enjoying the benefits of having that copy on my hard drive. So I should be able to invoke Section 109 of the Copyright Act saying this is essentially, in in modern-day parlance, a, uh, a resale of my uh, digital copy. And the court ultimately said no – uh, that's not true because Section 109 or the Copyright Act itself tells us that 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 downstream user that purchased that work through the Redigi platform ultimately makes another copy of that um, in order to listen to that particular work 
and that copy that's being made by the Redigi service was not authorized by the copyright owner, and therefore you lose. Uh, you lose uh, under Section 109, and you also lose under Section 107, the, the fair use doctrine, which was also rejected by the court. So my understanding is that the case has – there has been this stipulated judgment – but it's also – I don't know if it's being stayed or being held in abeyance somehow, but my understanding is also that this this case is is on its way to the Second Circuit uh, to ultimately decide the issue of liability, decide this exact issue under Section 109. Is this – can this be eligible for uh, for sale immunity? This is really a big deal, I think, because of the way consumer expectations evolve around – purchasing digital media. I think it would come as great surprise to most lay people when they've shelled out a bunch of money uh, to purchase movies or music to think that they don't have rights in that, um, that they could not financially uh, make use of reselling them or having an heir resell them should they pass away. Uh, and the way things stand now and the way Redigi organized its business, uh, that doesn't work. And you were interviewed for this piece at a journal of musical things, Mike, and, and noted that the court found the first sale doctrine didn't apply to the works at issue because once the files were uploaded to Redigi's cloud storage, that constituted a new reproduction, as you just said. Uh, but is there a way, can you conceive of a way, you know, sort of a la the Aereo case where a creative company could figure out a way to have you transfer the files on your hard drive without there being a reproduction and thus get around that problem? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't know the answer to that, Denise. It seems to me mm -hmm. that right now that that may not be technologically possible or feasible yeah. because there's always going to have to be another copy that's being made by the end user in order to in order to uh, to listen to the file. I would think. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe there would be a way to stream it from the uh, original purchaser's website. But then even then, if you're streaming it, that's probably going to constitute some sort of improper performance um, in violation of the terms of service or maybe even under the Copyright Act. So uh, I don't know. It seems uh, it seems like as we understand things right now, that might be that might be difficult. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm just sort of conducting a thought experiment here. I'm not saying it would be a good business model, but I think it should be somehow technologically possible to take bit for bit the copy of the file that is on one computer and transfer that to another computer, you know, the same well, way you, you would that. stick it on a USB drive. Although maybe that again is just making a copy and exactly. not actually deleting it. I think it goes back to the prestige. That was, that was the movie, mm -hmm. right? prestige with um, the body swapping. But, I, mm. I, you know, <laughs> this is that I didn't find that portion of the court's argument very convincing at all, that whenever you are moving a file on your hard drive, if you want to move it from your My Documents folder to your My Pictures folder, you're making a copy. It's deleting the original and it's copying those bits over to a separate sector of the hard drive. So like the idea that, you know, <sighs> that transferring the song to this server is in fact making a separate copy of it and for that reason runs afoul. I, I, I didn't find that very convincing. What I did think was, so first of all, I love the idea of Redigi. I think that, you know, um, it was very, very clever of them to search for songs that were legally purchased. You know, it was, it was them saying, okay, well, the first sale doctrine exists. How can we apply this to the internet? The best way we can think of doing this is to search for songs that have been you know, purchased so we can know, we can rely on iTunes to prove that these people have actually purchased the song. The problem, though, is that they're not purchasing the song, they're purchasing a license to the song. So that's where I think that the problem comes in here is because when we, our, our conception of what's happening when we're buying this media is, you know, incorrect. We're not buying the media, we're buying permission to play the media or to download the media from this other person. Um, that being said, you know, like I said, I love the idea of Redigi. Um, 
And, you know, on the technical limitations that we were just talking about, you know, we had um, Greg McMullen of Ascribe on the show a couple of months ago, but they're doing something that's trying to do something similar to this. So like we were saying, technically, you know, it, it may be impossible to transfer a song without copying it because the, whenever you're moving this, these bits around, it's it's just copying and different – copying and deleting. That's all it is. Um, but what Ascribe and the folks over there are doing, they're trying to uh, – create um, cryptographic tokens that you could then pair with pieces of media so that individuals um, that were then, sorry, signed or recorded on the blockchain. So what that would let people do is um, release cryptographically authenticated individual copies of things onto the internet so that you could know that, uh, you know, this file is one of a limited run of releases on the internet. And I could then know that if I transferred the cryptographic token assigned to that file and the file to someone else, that that person would be the person that has the, uh, you know, the, the proof that they own it, uh, individually, you know, that's, it's not quite DRM, um, because, you know, it's not software preventing the playing of the file, but it is a sort of cryptographic proof that, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the purchase was transferred. So I could see a platform like that enabling a sort of first sale doctrine on the internet. But yeah, right now, technically, it's just not possible. Um, well, Emery, so how, how is that model, though, different? How does that alleviate the the redigi issue about another copy being made by the end user or, or somebody else? It, wasn't it doesn't. Authorized. It doesn't alleviate. All right. So the problem with that is that um, in, in the redigi context, it wouldn't uh, alleviate the problem specifically here because um, again, it's scanning things that were purchased from iTunes. But the idea being that if you had an iTunes that worked with a scribe, or if you had um, you know a platform that allowed people to sell music or sell digital goods that also came with uh that also accompanied the sale a a cryptographically unique token then that person that then purchases from that service um wouldn't be purchasing a license it it, it, provided that the terms of the purchase were different that the contract uh allowed them to actually be buying the thing and not a license to the thing then they would have the ability to cryptographically prove ownership allowing them to transfer that ownership to someone else uh, without the possibility that that individual thing could be copied and exist on both computers simultaneously. 